Thank you for the invitation. My name is Joost Bormans. I'm a urologist at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And my main interests are patients with uh, urethelial carcinoma. Well, my lecture on the upcoming EAU is on urinary biomarkers um, for patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. And what I tried to do in this lecture is that I first gave an overview of what uh, diagnostic tests, uh, what, what the qualifications of a diagnostic test should, should be. So there are some quality parameters being sensitivity, specificity, negative predictive value and positive predictive value. And uh, for instance, the positive predictive value is influenced by the prevalence of a disease. And uh, you have to take that into account if you want to assess the value of these diagnostic tests, because in patients with microscopic hematuria, the prevalence of bladder cancer is very low to 3%. But if you test in a population with gross hematuria, then the chances of having bladder cancer are much higher, up, up to almost 30%. So the first part of my lecture is on these quality parameters and the populations in which the diagnostic assays are tested. And then I give an overview of uh, the different tests that are available. Uh, with I will start with cytology, that's the most uh, well known and most studied and because it's been with us for a long time. And then I um, give an overview of the performance of the tests in the primary setting. So to detect bladder cancer in patients with hematuria and then in the surveillance setting. And that means that patients who are in already been diagnosed with bladder cancer and then are in follow-up. Um, well, that's in brief, my, the, the short resume of my lecture. Yes, I think there's a role for the use of urinary biomarkers in bladder cancer. Once again, it's very important to realize uh, what you as a physician want to use this urinary biomarker for. Do you want to detect bladder cancer in a population with hematuria or do you want to detect recurrence, for instance, in a, in a population that's already been diagnosed with bladder cancer? So primary setting versus surveillance setting. And there are many tests coming available, are available, um, but you really have to take into account the uh, limitations of all the tests. Um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, a gold standard test that outperforms um, all other tests or cystoscopy. But with the advanced uh, technology of, of uh, high throughput uh, sequencing analysis and the possibility to detect genomic alterations in urine of patients, uh, I have the idea or the impression that we will face a future with, uh, with the replacement of, or partly replacement of cystoscopy by urinary biomarkers. Thank you, yeah, good question. Um, I believe that for the primary setting, uh, so the diagnostic setting, we uh, would be helped with a test that reduces the number of unnecessary cystoscopies. So in many countries across Europe, it's still advised in patients with microhematuria to undergo cystoscopy and ultrasound or CT scan. And uh, obviously, uh, all the patients with, who smoked, who have smoked their lives, they have a higher chance of being diagnosed with, with bladder cancer, but for the younger, younger population, um, female population, they have a much lower risk of having bladder cancer. So it's really a risk-adapted approach to test in the microscopic hematuria population. And I have the impression, I believe, that a urinary test um, uh, will, uh, will be possible, will we'll have the capacity, I have to say, to replace cystoscopy in that population, so reduce the number of unnecessary cystoscopies. On the other hand, for uh, patients who are in follow-up, 
for uh, high-grade non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. There are some tests available that have quite good uh, performance. Uh, they have specificity that's in the range of cytology, sometimes even better, and they have a sensitivity that's uh, much higher than for cytology. So um, I believe these two uh, subpopulations are the most promising for the use of urinary biomarkers. Well, this is a very relevant question because we are not there yet with urinary biomarkers. And I believe there are two things very important. First of all, we need re real world data on the performance of these tests in daily or in routine clinical practice. And second, we need well-designed uh, clinical trials with well-defined primary endpoints and homogeneous populations so that we really can assess whether a test is of use in a primary setting versus a surveillance setting, or if a test is useful to rule out patients for unnecessary cystoscopies, or rule in patients for the detection of high-grade non-muscle invasive disease. So these two um, uh, items are uh, still very important to get urinary biomarkers to the point of implementation in clinical practice.